Okay, um, a few weeks ago, after I drilled out my idle jet in my Predator 301 that was on my mud motor, um, it ran better and it uh, idled better, started easier. However, uh, as I was running it, I noticed that um, there was a lot of oil vapor coming out of the uh, vent tube and um, a couple times it stopped and it was difficult to turn over again and before this after the last time I used it I had put um, more oil in because it it looked like it was a bit down a little bit and um, I'm thinking that that was probably the wrong thing to do and also, uh, have a, I found out another tidbit of information that I wish I had known about before. Um, on the GX270 and GX390 and the big block uh, Predator series, including the 301, uh, the, they actually run about 2 to 3 degrees more advanced timing than the, uh, the other type of predator engines do like the 212 etc and uh, I had wondered when I got my hop-up kit why um, it came with a four degree advance key instead of the six which was rec what was recommended with the ARC flywheel that I was using so anyway long story short I'm running the uh, the mud motor to test it out before I was going to go fishing later that in the next following weekend and uh, it stopped all of a sudden and it was, had been running hot you could you could feel the heat being transferred to the mud motor shaft and I was wondering why this had to had occurred and what it was was a culmination of several things and this is basically a video telling you what not to do specifically timing wise specifically for the Predator 301 and the big block Predators or the GX270 and GX390 but overall some of the things uh, that occurred here what happened would apply to any small engine um, in a nutshell the engine locked up tight as a drum I thought that I had overheated it and uh, I thought that I, I had welded, basically welded the piston into the cylinder, but that wasn't the case. And uh, after talking to a few people, I was trying to determine what the failure was, so I didn't repeat it. Um, it was a culmination of several things, like I stated. Uh, the main thing was uh, you cannot run a Predator 301 with a 6 degree advance key after removing the governor and adding like an ARC or even a stock flywheel you don't want to use a six degree timing key with that that's too much timing and in actuality I was running about approximately nine degrees advanced timing and after talking to the guys at ARC I was trying to determine what was the cause of failure before I tore this apart and and found out um, yeah, this, this engine runs with about two to three degrees more advanced than the other uh, Predator series and Honda series engines. So if you're running a six degree key, you, uh, you're running actually about nine degrees of timing. And in a uh, you have reduced air being blown over the cylinder head and uh, it's the engine's going to run hotter in a nutshell. Uh, that's way too much timing for this engine. Don't if you're running a 301, do not run more than a four degree advance key. You're if you're running a four degree advance key, you're getting that six degrees advance and maybe even seven. So that's the first part. The second thing is that not only made it run hotter, but it also it, it put greater pressure in the greater cylinder pressure, which put more stress on the bearing on the rod journal which is ultimately was where my failure occurred um, the other problem was I was running too much oil I had removed the low oil sensor so I'm very diligent about uh, checking the oil I wasn't worried about running too little oil but um, I noticed it had used a little bit of oil after the first time I had run it so I, I topped it up but 
unfortunately I put too much oil in and normally the the fillers are right around here and when I removed this after this locked up uh, the oil came out enough to fill the bottoms of two cut off uh, plastic um, water bottle the bottom of a water bottle I, it filled that up twice before it was level to where it would have normally been so I was running way too much oil and when you do that um, you can basically it whips the oil into a froth and aerates the oil so you're not getting the same degree of oiling to your bearings as you would with um, if it has the proper level of oil and in a small engine like this it's also detrimental because if it's putting out more heat like this one was um, that oil doesn't really have anywhere to go to be cooled so once you've whipped it into a froth in there and it's red hot um, and you're exerting because you're running more time and you're exerting more pressure on there that wipes this bearing clean more and also causes an oil starvation issue even though there's more oil than you need in there it causes the same thing as if you don't have enough oil and um, the combination of too much advance running it hotter than it needed to be and having too much oil in there is what caused the failure of this engine I determined this by removing several things first thing I started off I removed the, the valve cover gasket and after doing that I could see the top of the head. I noticed I didn't drop any valves. I didn't, nothing looked out of the ordinary in the valve train. So I pulled the head off. And then uh, my lifter rods were not bent. So then I moved on further. And looking into the cylinder, the cylinder wasn't scored. There was no hole in the piston. So I knew I hadn't hold the piston. I hadn't locked it up in there. And I tapped on it lightly, tapped on the piston lightly with a rubber mallet, it moved. Um, so then I took the cover off, and I still didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. The camshaft looked fine. Uh, the lifters were in place. It was still in time. And nothing looked out of the ordinary. Uh, the, the rod was intact, and I didn't notice anything until I drained out the remaining bit of oil that was in the bottom and I noticed there was a lot of aluminum aluminum flake a lot of aluminum metal flake that I hadn't noticed when I drained the rest of the oil so then I took uh, I took the rod off and this is what I found and that there's the culmination of too much oil in an end in a small engine and running too much timing and that's what that's the result of it right there it uh, I also was running conventional oil and I was running 5w30 instead of the 10w30 which I probably should have so to rectify that uh, unless you're running this thing in the winter time below 32 degrees run 10w30 oil and preferably synthetic oil as well because although this ultimately still would have happened had I done that it probably would have delayed it enough it probably would have uh, not had this happen so readily uh, the synthetic oil and a thicker synthetic oil is going to retain its its oil film on this journal bearing better than the lower viscosity oil so that's another tidbit um, run 10w30 in these engines regardless if it's conventional or synthetic preferably synthetic um, and here's the here's the result on the on the crank journal. Now theoretically I could take this to a machine shop, have this crank cleaned up and then just get another rod connecting rod, reassemble this engine and have it actually work again. I mean it literally that was the only damage that was sustained in this but as cheap as these engines are uh, it's really not worth it. You can go to Harbor Freight and for 250 bucks get a whole brand new one and that will take me to the next video uh, that I'll have describing my next problem that I encountered when I went to get a new 301 engine and basically what happened was uh, three months ago was the time that I bought this they were blowing out the 2015 models which was this design uh, the number on it is a where is it 61415 and that was the conventional head design 
the new models uh, of 301, and I actually think the new models of the 212 this year for 2016 are a Hemi head design, which is a shorter head, but it's wider and has incorporates a hemispherical combustion chamber in there. So actuality, it could have worked out for the best. Uh, Hemi, Hemi engines generally, um, they generally make more power easily. They have better flow through the head. And uh, in, in, a, in a sense, it's a better engine. Uh, they've changed manufacturers. A couple of the upgrade, a couple of the things they've made on there are not quite as good as this one. I think that this one is, in general, a better engine as far as build quality. But uh, I think the design of the new ones is superior. But anyway, long story short, uh, for 2016, they're a Hemi head design now. So I had to redo all of the throttle arrangement that I had made on here and make some modifications, cut and paste some bits from the old one onto the new one. Uh, and in the next video, I'll outline the changes between last year's model and the current model. But for now, that's all I have to say about this. Um, like I showed... You know, two things you don't want to do, don't run too much timing in a Predator 301, nothing more than a, a four degree advance key for one, especially in a mud moat, mud boat motor, because you're not going to have as much air flowing around the, the engine as you would in, say, a high performance go-kart application. And secondly, um, don't run too much oil. It doesn't matter what small engine it is in that instance, do not run too much oil in the engine or this is the, going to be pretty much the result. That's all for now. Uh, the next video will outline the differences between the new and the old uh, Predator 301 series of engine.